There's an energy that lives inside all of us. The more we feed it, the more it fuels us. It helps us bring our best selves to the world every day. What is it? Vitality. As a company, we're on a journey to learn as much as we can about vitality, how it relates to health, how it affects workforces, how it drives engagement, retention, and productivity of the workforce. <clears throat> Just think about what we've been through with the pandemic. In the blink of an eye, many of us had to juggle work from home, homeschooling, trying to stay safe, being healthy. People everywhere were under enormous stress. Clinicians were facing burnout from an endless stream of dying patients. We all felt lonely, and elderly people living alone were in despair. Behavioral health issues cropped up, and we're still, de still dealing with those today. What we witnessed was more than the convergence of physical and mental health. It was the totality of the things that impact our ability to pursue life with purpose, strength, and energy. It was our vitality. So we worked with Dr. Richard Ryan, as you saw in the video, to develop the Evernorth uh, Vitality Index. And to do that, we surveyed more than 10,000 adults across America to understand what vitality means in their daily lives. Our work confirmed some long-held beliefs and uncovered some new findings in future areas for work. We found that there's a clear relationship between a good working environment and vitality. Nearly all employed adults with high vitality are satisfied with their job. More than 60% insurance. Low levels of vitality are associated with higher absenteeism, poor work quality, higher turnover, and higher workplace dissatisfaction. Please join me in welcoming Dan Pink. Hey, Katya, thanks for that nice welcome. Um, I'm traveling today and I'm in a, um, a gilded conference room in Las Vegas, so I feel a little bit like a Bond villain. Well, this is just such a great backdrop. I'm so disappointed to hear that's not how you have your house furnished. <laughs> your latest book, I think, is may be competing with Drive for my favorite. Um, if Drive helped me become a better leader, I think Regret is helping me become a better human being. Hmm. And well, thanks. One of the things I note, Dan, about your, your work is you're very rigorous in your research. At the same time, you really focus on the human dimension and compelling storytelling. So it's not just about the quantitative, it's about the qualitative, it's about human beings. And I'm just curious, you know, you're, I think you are a standout in terms of combining those two elements together. And I was curious how you came to that and, and what it's like to put together these different books, um, bringing together those two ways of looking at the world. Well, I mean, that's so nice of you to say, Katya, all those kind uh, comments. Uh, I think that there is a there's a natural affinity between some of the stuff that I've done and what Cigna is doing. Uh, mm -hmm. After all, uh, the, that book Drive that you mentioned talks about the work of self-determination theory, which was founded by Edward D.C. and Richard Ryan, who did the vitality index that you guys have done, which I think is a fascinating research explana uh, exploration. So for me, um, you know, I think those two things were I think those two things work together. Um, you know, I think that people people want rigor. They want to know anytime somebody is out there making claims, um, you should be very you should be generously skeptical and you should ask that person, how do you know? And so I like to show my work. Uh, I like to I like to make sure that 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 readers understand that what I'm saying is solidly backed up. This is one reason why for 20 years I've had a battle with my publisher and that I like to actually put footnotes in the text itself. So people can, rather than like sort of more general end notes, so that people can uh, look at, I can write a sentence and it says 14 and they can go to the end, they can go to the end notes and see what are you talking about with 14? And actually in a couple of cases, readers have told me that I'm wrong. So I want to, I want that rigor, but I'm not an academic. So um, I want, I want to show how this relates to people's lives. And, and, and I, and I think that one of the things that's really important is, um, is what people want ultimately, I think, what I want as a reader, as a person, is I want to have a sense of how the world works. I want to have a sense, I want to have a way to understand the world, to see the world, to make sense of it. But I also want to know what to do, okay? Mm -hmm. And so they're too, too often I read books, it's like a big idea book, and I say, okay, well, my God, the world is changing. What should I do? What should I do? And they, well, I, I don't do that. Then there are other books that are like, 
oh, do this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, okay, how do you know, guy? And <laughs> and so I try to I try to marry the two. Um, it this is one reason it takes me so long to write those books is that that's a arduous process. But um, uh, I, but that but but being you know hearing from readers and and being at things like this make me um, question my life choices less. They might make <laughs> me to to use it to borrow a term feel a greater sense of vitality. Hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about that vitality and the part you mentioned about being able to take action on research. You know, we've had a rough few years uh, and a lot of talk about things like burnout. Uh, in fact, I think 89% of Americans who left their job last year cited burnout as a reason for leaving. We also talk, heard a lot about languishing. You know, the, the counter to that, of course, is vitality. Um, yeah. But why vitality and how vitality? Well, I mean, I actually think that that, that the vital, vital I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a, a marker of when you talk to writers of whether they actually really like an idea. All right. Here's a little secret. All right. If they say to themselves, crap, I wish I thought of that. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of how I feel with vitality. I think that vitality is a very is, is really an ingenious term and an ingenious way to measure things. And the, and I think the reason for its ingenuity is that it is. It is multidisciplinary. Now, that's kind of a, 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 a antiseptic word, multidisciplinary. But um, our lives are less boundaried than we think. I mean, uh, David was talking about that at the beginning, where it's like suddenly we find ourselves, we're working, we're taking care of a kid, we're, we're, we're dealing with uh, uh, homeschooling. Uh, our lives are less bounded than that. Like sort of, so what is physical health? What is emotional well-being? What is enjoying your work? What is having a satisfying family life? Those things all work together. And I think that for years, we've been looking for a catch-all way to describe that. To some extent, uh, the, the cons, the, some of the, the work on flourishing is like that. But mm -hmm. I think that vitality um, really captures the, 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 the physical health element of it, too, and makes us understand how these things work together. And that's and I think that's essential. Um, you know, if I am feeling physically healthy, I'm going to do better at work. But if I'm not burnt out at work, I'm going to be physically healthier. And so the arrows, the causal arrows are pointing in multiple directions. And I think vitality, I, I think vitality captures that. Um, and, I, and, I, and it's no surprise that Richard Ryan was uh, one of the people starting, because I think that what Ryan and DZ have done uh, in the last 50 years is I, I think that they're going to end up being in psychology textbooks and history mm -hmm. of science textbooks for our, our, our children, our grandchildren, and their grandchildren. I think it's, it's that degree of influence and impact on how we see ourselves and how we see the world. And I think that um, vitality is a, is, a, is a notion that strikes me as something that's going to really um, stick around. In a study with over 10,000 participants, we made an interesting discovery. People with high vitality are physically stronger, mentally healthier, and have greater job satisfaction. But here's where it gets even better. Those with low vitality can get there too. By taking small, consistent actions, vitality levels can increase over time, which means healthier and happier lives, homes, workplaces, and communities for everyone. That's what makes this so big. We can now quantify the unquantifiable. Let's tap into vitality together.